The tank engine, for its size, is the most versatile thing on the rails. And the tender engines are the power behind the expresses and the goods trains that go all over the island of Sicily. This is NWR Stories. Scruffy's Revenge Duck was, was tired. He had a long day running his usual passenger trains on the Little Western. He was relieved to finally reach the last station on his journey. Oh, another great journey on the Little Western branch line. <sighs> I really love my line said Duck. I beg your pardon. You mean your line. Don't you mean our line? Laughed Oliver. You know what I mean, old friend, said Duck. But they were soon cut off by the entrance of the Fat Controller. Well done, Duck. You made another successful run this summer season. You, are, you Western engines have done well. Thank you, sir. We do our best to strive. Yes, you do. <coughs> <coughs> Are you all right, sir? Said Oliver. You don't seem so good. It's just a little cough, Oliver. I'm all right. No need, no cause for concern. But sir, are you sure? Yes, Duck, I'm sure. Now, keep up the good work. Uh, yes sir, said Duck. There's clearly something wrong with him, said Thomas. Yes, I think so too. It's not the first time he's coughed since, you know, in a while. It's like he's hiding something. Or what if he doesn't even know what it is? We could be both right. Well, he is up there in age. Come to think of it, I think he's the only fat controller that's ever managed the railway at the age of 80-something, said Oliver, observing. Well, I hope something is figured out, said Duck. And with a toot of his whistle, Duck left the station to go put his coaches in the sidings. That night, all the engines were all gathered at the sheds for a good night's rest. They were all very tired from their hard working day. Duck soon spoke up. So, has anyone noticed anything weird about the Fat Controller recently? Ugh, I can't tell. Every time we ask him, he just dismisses it. He's been coughing up a storm, said Donald. Yeah, he co he's coughing more than a smoker, said Douglas in agreement. Well, like those before him, he's not really known as a smoker, said James. All the fat controllers, despite their size, have basically kept healthy lifestyles. I just hope he's okay. It it would be very unfortunate for something bad to happen to him, said Henry worried. I think we're all just worrying too much, said Edward from the siding. Everything will work out eventually. Things always do, don't they? 
All the engines agreed to just stop talking about it and just try to go to sleep. But they all wondered what was wrong with the fat controller. The next day, Oliver was shunting coaches for his next train when the yard manager approached him. What seems to be the problem, ma'am? said Oliver. Sorry, Oliver, but you're not scheduled to be here today. Huh? That's strange. But I'm usually supposed to pull the morning passenger runs. Yeah, there's been a change of schedule. You're actually going to be needed in the yards to move around some cars. Will that be trouble? No, not at all. As long as I have work, I'm really useful, said Oliver. Good. I'll have Diesel come and take your train today. All right. Sounds good to me, said Oliver. Oliver was soon in couple from his coaches, and he left to head to the yards. First thing he had to do before he headed to the yards, he had to collect tow. Because pulling goods trains wouldn't be the same at all. And with a toot of his whistle, he soon left the yard. As Oliver was puffing down the line, Toad couldn't help but notice that something was wrong with Oliver. Mr. Oliver, is something wrong? said Toad curiously. Well, I really wasn't in the mood to pull good strings today. But, you know, I can never pass up a chance to work with you, Toad. Oh, it warms my buffers to hear you say that, Mr. Oliver. When Oliver arrived into the yard, he was surprised with the amount of trucks that was in the sidings. But what he was soon about to see was going to really make him upset. There, in two sidings away from him, was a truck that Oliver had had a history with. S.C. Ruffy, a privately owned wagon. Oh no. Not you again, said Oliver angrily. Yes, it's me, Ollie. <laughs> Still in a town terrible well. Every time I get upset, I think about you in that well, and I just laugh. <laughs> Laughed Scruffy. You know, sometimes I wish... Sir Topham had let you stay in that pile that you were in after I pulled you apart, said Oliver. Temper, temper, said Scruffy. Don't let him get the best of you, Mr. Oliver. We can handle this, said Toad encouragingly. Oliver took a deep breath and said, You're right, Toad. I can manage. Thank you. Soon, Oliver's train was ready, with Toad at the back, and passing through a long line of freight cars, was Oliver at the front. Hold back, hold back, said Scruffy, and the truck started to giggle, but Oliver, knowing how this situation would play out, started to move, and after getting control of the situation, when he of his whistle, Oliver left out the side of his train. It wasn't long before Scruffy started to stir up trouble throughout the journey. He would constantly keep picking at Oliver and egging the trucks to disobey him. As Oliver made his way up the bridge, Scruffy and the cars would try their best to hold back. Oliver to travel much slower than usual. Oliver knew that all this foolishness with the trucks was going to cause him to be late. And it was sad to say that Oliver was right about being late. He had arrived 50 minutes late than his original deadline to get to the goods station. Let's just say it did not end well 
Gee, Oliver, what took you so long? Said Emily. Troublesome trucks, as usual. <sighs> said Oliver angrily. And now I'm going to be hearing about this tonight from the Fat Controller. Oliver retrieved Toad from the back of the train, and he soon left to head back to the yards. And as you may have guessed, the Fat Controller wasn't too happy. Oliver, you were late with your train today. Explain. Well, sir, the trucks were giving me trouble today. Scruffy was trying his best to try to screw me up. But I guess he ended up getting his wish. I thought you would have handled that back in the 60s. I know, sir, but no buts. Do better, Oliver. We're running a tight railway here. Yes, sir, said Oliver. That night, Oliver and Duck were talking in the shed. <sighs> you would think pulling him apart would make him act right, said Oliver angrily. He made me late, and then I got scolded for it. I know, but don't get bent out of shape about it. It will be all right, said Duck. Easy for you to say. You don't. You didn't pull good strings today. That's besides the point, Oliver. But the important thing is, is that you need to calm down. I don't want you to do anything you might regret out of anger. <sighs> Oliver said nothing for the rest of the night and just backed into the shed to fall asleep. Duck was worried for Oliver, but he just thought it was best to let it be. The next day, Oliver was sent to the yard to work with the trucks again, but he decided to confront Scruffy for making him late yesterday. All right, here are the rules today. What I say goes. I am tired of this little debate between me and you said Oliver, angrily. You don't scare me, Great Western. How about you go back to the scrapyard that Douglas found you in? Oliver had lost his patience, and without a second thought, he rammed right into Scruffy, causing him to roll back violently and crash in the yard. Duck arrived to in the yard and he saw the whole thing Oliver what did you do said duck surprised Oliver saw what he did and he was horrified you told me last night not to do anything out of anger and look what I did said Oliver upset all he could do was just look at his own buffers Duck soon got a crane and put Scruffy right back on the rails. And Oliver decided to do something that he never thought he would do. All right, Scruffy. Look, I know me and you don't get along, but I just want to say this. I apologize for tearing you in half. I didn't expect that to happen. I just thought that I would just teach you a lesson. Just why do you feel like you have this little vendetta against me? Said Oliver. It's because sometimes you engines barely show care towards us trucks. You bump us around like we're just a bunch of ruffians in the yard. But we don't get treated with respect. I mean, we're troublesome, yes, but that's just our nature. But... You know, we only get worse when we don't sh have our own appreciation, said Scruffy. I never realized that, Scruffy. Wow. Have you guys thought about saying anything? Said Oliver. No, because they're not going to listen to us. We're just shabby rolling stock, said Scruffy. Well, how about this? We don't have to be friends, and we don't really have to like each other. But, for the sake of my next few deliveries, can you please just... Just not cause me to get late again? Said Oliver, pleadingly. 
Fine. You got yourself a deal, Great Western, said Scruffy. After once more assembling his train, Oliver soon started off, and he was determined to make sure that he was on time. Oliver roared down the line with his train, determined to not be late. And when the trucks thought about getting out of line, both Oliver and Scruffy kept them in check. They didn't want to admit it, but when they actually worked together, they were actually a pretty good team. And after a long journey, Oliver finally arrived at the goods station with his train. He was on time. I'm glad we were able to cooperate, said Oliver to Scruffy. Yeah, whatever. Don't get used to it, Great Western. And thank you for showing me respect, you know, throughout this run. Maybe if more of the engines were more like you, we wouldn't have the issues we have, said Scruffy. Well, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that one, said Oliver. The next day, Oliver spoke to Duck about what happened between him and Scruffy. Well, despite your bumping of him, said Duck, I'm glad you two patched up and got to talk. Yes, I had to realize that trucks are going to be troublesome no matter what. It's just sometimes we have to be careful when we bump them, because they will get mad. I would say another word, but there are children on the platform, said Duck. True. But, in all, we just need to just be careful what we do or say to the trucks. Hear, hear, old friend. Hear, hear. Well... I have another passenger run to attend to. See you later, Oliver. And with his toot of his whistle, Duck soon left the station with his train. And Oliver, who wasn't due to leave in a long, in a long while, sat there and thought about the events, these past events. The end.